We are just getting in brand new video right now from Salt Lake City where doctors are performing a, a separation surgery on some four-year-old conjoined twin girls. And can you imagine the agony these parents are going through? These are uh, the parents of Malia and Kendra Heron, like I said, four years old. Let's listen to this tape. This has got to be an agonizing decision for them. Their twins share a kidney as well as a pelvis. They each have one leg. And now at the age of four years old, the parents have decided that it's time to separate these two little girls. What makes this surgery so problematic is that only one twin will get to have that kidney uh, and the other twin will have to go on to dialysis for between three months and six months. And then uh, her mom is planning to donate a kidney to that twin but of course this is just it's a very risky surgery uh, and as you can see the parents just giving last-minute kisses to their daughters and you might imagine uh, prayers as well for their safety undergoing this uh, very complicated surgery with me now someone who knows a bit about what these girls parents are going through Emily Stark's twin girls Alexandra and Sydney underwent separation surgery when they were babies and Emily joins me now. Emily, great to see you today. What does watching that Thank video you. do for you? When, when you know what that's like to send your little send your little girls off under a doctor's knife. You know, it's actually one of the most scariest things. It's almost bittersweet in a way. Actually, I'm kind of teary-eyed from watching that. I'm sorry, but it's it's one of those days where you're. You're so used to caring for conjoined twins. You've mastered what it's like to take care of two little babies that are intertwined. And all of a sudden coming to the reality that you could leave the hospital with, with nobody. Or you could just go home with one child. And when I go out and speak about this, I speak to women's organizations in different places. It's one of the most important things I share is people don't realize it's such a bittersweet day and it's scary and it's it's a hard day for the mom and dad and, and in this case they are even making a tougher decision because number one their girls are four years old the doctors have said yeah. they were in no great risk by living a conjoined life at least for right now they you know there were questions about whether that kidney would hold up for both of them as they grew grew older but at this point uh, right. they were living a life that's okay and then to make the decision as those parents have to for one child to have a vital organ, the other one doesn't get it, has to go on dialysis, and then w once the kidney transplant takes place, will have to be on uh, anti-rejection medicine for the rest of her life. Can you imagine having to make that agonizing decision? You know, as a parent who has been there, it's one of the most challenging things because when you think about separation, you almost have to think at what cost am I, um, you know, causing to my children for making this decision. But I always in the back of my mind thought that at, at the age of 15, when my daughter Alexandra would come running up to me and say, Mom, 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 I want to go on a date. I could look at her and say, oh, Lexi, have a wonderful time alone and not have to worry about her sister always being there. I, I mean, we're still showing, I'd, I'd like to keep the sound up on this tape that we're seeing, and it's just, you know, I, it just makes you feel for these parents and what the next uh, perhaps up to 30 hours is going to be like for them. What is the waiting like? You know, for us, it's it's long. We had family and friends. We were just surrounded by people that loved us and that were busy praying for us. And so it was a very long day, but as you hear the different steps throughout the day, it's heartbreaking because I can remember exactly at 10.02 is when they cut my daughter's skin. It took two hours to even prepare to cut the skin. And I knew at that point that was like the moment we could not turn back. I couldn't say, stop, put them back together, quick, do something. So it's agonizing, but it's a long day. It's a long process, and you just sit and you wait 
and you wait for the updates and you just wait for that good news and you wait for that miraculous ending at the end. A again, I, I want to continue our conversation, Emily, but just to update our viewers, we're keeping an eye on the latest video just coming into us from Salt Lake City where two little four-year-old conjoined twins are undergoing an operation right now. That operation began about 8.30 Eastern time uh, and here you can see them uh, picking up these, you know, this is... These are operations that require not just one doctor either, but a massive team of surgeons and support staff in there. Was even the thought of how big this operation was scary for you, Emily? You know, it is. We had an amazing team here in Denver. There were, I think, about 56 people involved between doctors, nurses, and different techs. But it's amazing how they pre-planned everything so beautifully. They did dry runs. It's not like they go into these surgery just, you know, out of the blue. They really have pre-planned who does what at what step, what equipment comes in. It's incredible the amount of teamwork and legwork that goes into some sort of separation. And it's a long day. And Emily, when your little girls were going through this, Alexandra and Sydney, I, I mentioned that they were babies. And most conjoined twins, if they're going to mm -hmm. have this separation operation, it does happen before the age of one. Do, what kind of challenges do you think that these parents, given the fact that the girls are older, are going to face? I think, honestly, the biggest challenge is they have been with these little girls for the last four years. They've mastered being wonderful parents of conjoined twins. And they have fallen so in love with these little girls that the idea of not having these little girls in their lives, it's just got to be heartbreaking. It, because it was hard for us at seven months. I can't imagine at four years how difficult this is for their, their the, parents. The Heron family also has another younger set of twins. They have five children in total. I understand <laughs> that you're getting ready to face a similar yeah. challenge yourself. <laughs> No twins. We're done with the twins. Okay. You're expecting <laughs> we are expecting. Baby? We are. We're expecting a baby boy in about four weeks. And have you already thought about how that's going to uh, add to your life? <laughs> you know, I am so pleased it's a little boy so we don't have any more estrogen <laughs> in the house. <laughs> but the, my girls are so excited to have a baby brother, and I just think it's the perfect ending to our family. Yeah, it's... Uh... Well, it's just amazing to see them all smiling despite the particular challenges. I know I keep using that word, but, but they certainly have had mm -hmm. a, a hard road to go, and now it seems like uh, this is going to be a step forward in those lives. I just can't get over this video. Emily Stark, thank you so much for joining us, and good luck with your new baby as well. Thank you so much. And we should mention we're expecting periodic updates on the twin surgery. As you mentioned, it could take up to 30 hours. So we'll be sure to pass along any news that we receive and any new video that we may be getting because there are cameras there. And we'll be forwarding it along to you so you can kind of keep track of their progress. So we want to go to break. We want to take you to break out on that video once again and listen to the parents once again telling their little girls goodbye before their surgery, giving them those last-minute kisses and, you know, heartfelt prayers as well. Can you see some more butterflies? I'll bet you can find some. I'll see.